All right, hey everybody, it's uh, it's me, Ark. Not that that really means anything, but uh, yeah, I haven't made a video in a while because I uh, went back to college and have been sort of acclimating and I've been really busy, but I did finally get enough time to sort of sit down and I wanted to make another video on a laptop I really like. So this is the Fujitsu P1630 and um, it's an 8.9 inch netbook from 2008, about 14 years ago. And um, I really was looking for this. Well, I found found this because also it's got the weird Fujitsu felt on the bottom that is kind of weird, but kind of makes it feel hotter than it actually is, but I don't, I don't know why. But uh, anyway, I was looking for a very small and mobile, yet still capable device uh, to just sort of have. And um, I mean, the like the Fujitsu U810, which I made a video on previously, um, that was kind of outdated as soon as it was released. Um, very underpowered and so small that it was kind of a hassle to use. You couldn't really, like anything that you would want to do with that would be better served just getting a regular laptop. laptop. Um, so this one in particular has a Core 2 Duo, which is pretty usable, still usable today, um, in my opinion. Um, I mean, the specs, um, it's, what is it? The ultra low voltage SU 9300 Core 2 Duo. It's 1.2 gigahertz, so um, a little slower than a, a normal laptop, but still pretty capable. And it's got two gigabytes of RAM, which really helps um, because you can actually sort of do things on it. Um, that's getting kind of tough to do these days, but you can still use things on it. Um, yeah, let's just go around it. It's an 8.9 inch screen. Um, what ports do we have? This is Express Card, or is it? Let me, let me check. Um, no, that's Card Bus. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, hoping for Express Card, but um, there's a Wi-Fi switch. The front, big battery. Um, now the battery could come in a smaller size that doesn't have this front part jutting out, but obviously you want more battery. Um, uh, let's see, what this is the stylus for the crappy resistive touchscreen, which is like a Nintendo DS, um, which you don't ever want to use, but uh, they still have it. Um, SD, USB, headphone, microphone, USB, barrel plug, so pretty standard. Um, VGA port, so that's nice to have on something this small. Um, on the U810, the VGA port was a separate dongle, so you sort of had to carry a separate accessory just to have VGA on it. Um, Ethernet, modem, Kensington lock, yeah, pretty standard, but still good to have mostly full featured uh, set on the laptop. So uh, here it is, um, 8.9 inch screen. I have the caps lock key on. And um, at this size, it's like kind of a sweet spot. If you want something small, kind of compact, but still want to be able to like actually read what you're seeing. Um, because the U810 with the like 5.6 inch screen was pretty unbearable. Um, this is 8.9 inch. What's the resolution? I think it's 1200 by, uh, or 1280 by 768. So I think that's like a 5.3 aspect ratio, close to. And on such a small screen, like 8.9 inch, it's pretty, pretty nice, um, pretty crispy. It's kind of a weird resolution, but <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it works. Um, there's also a webcam, as you can see, um, that's on the P1630. On the P1620, uh, it doesn't have webcam, so um, it's, you know, same quality as every other webcam made on a laptop the last 15 years, but it's there. Um, fingerprint reader, which I don't know, never really use. Macro buttons. Power switch is one of those sliding switches, which I don't really like because if you have to force the laptop off, then uh, you're going to hold it down and then it's going to like go back on as soon as you turn it off, it's, it sucks, I don't like it, but that's like such a small nitpick. Um, as you can see, the keyboard has a little track point like nub. Um, as for all the track point ripoffs I've ever seen, this one's actually pretty good. Um, it feels exactly like a ThinkPad track point. Um, mouse buttons, the keyboard itself is, uh, you might be able to tell it's a little bit shrunken down, but not like uh, so terrible that you can't type on it, like the U810s. Um, it, within two minutes, you can easily adjust to this. Um, let me see. Ah. So here's my ThinkPad X12 detachable keyboard, and I'll just like put it side by side. And you can see it's like mm, slightly shrunken down, but not 
just unbearably so. So, you know, I guess turning these keys from like centimeter to like 0.8 centimeters uh, was just enough to get the keys inside of a uh, small, small form factor like this. Let's compare it to Nintendo Switch because I feel like most, it's something that somebody might have um, more likely than not. Um, it is much thicker, obviously, uh, but it is kind of, very, it's, it's like book sized. Uh, when people say notebook, um, this is actually like a notebook size. So, well, wait a minute, I have a real notebook. Hold on. So here's a three subject notebook. It is, I think it's a little bit thicker. Let's see. Ah. Yeah, it's a bit thicker than a three subject notebook, but um, in terms of surface area, it is much smaller. It's more like a, like a normal textbook. Actually, I have a textbook too. Yeah, it is like pretty much exactly the size of this textbook. So like pretty much equal thickness. I mean, I guess it's a little thicker. I mean, the textbook was thicker, depending on the textbook you have. Um, and the surface area is pretty much the same. So in your backpack, it goes right next to the, to the, to the textbooks you bring to your class. Um, that's actually why, one of the reasons I was looking for something like this, um, cause I was tired of carrying around like a five pound behemoth laptop with me. And I was like, you know, I want something small, but I don't want something like, uh, built really crappily, like a, a $300 Acer netbook or something. And then I just kind of was like, okay, 8.9 inch. That's like a netbook size. Is there anything interesting? And it was this. All right. We logged in here. Uh, I just installed, it's a fresh install of uh, Void Linux, which I usually use. And uh, I haven't really tinkered around with this in a while because I did use it for like an entire semester, uh, one year, like a couple years ago. And, um, you know, it was perfectly fine. I really liked using it. The battery is made of, um, it, I checked it earlier and it's made of Fujitsu's like blood magic, where even though this is a 14 year old laptop, the battery still has 100% capacity somehow. <laughs> So it's a, a 56 watt hour battery. I feel like you would get like uh, maybe four or five hours out of this, which is pretty good um, considering how old it is. And uh, laptops around then didn't have like super good battery life like today where you could easily get 10 hours. So yeah, the keyboard is, um, like I mentioned, shrunken down and it, it won't take that long to uh, get used to. Let's see. Um, Yeah, if you pardon my hands here. Yeah, so like, um, it is a little, you know that you're typing on something a little smaller, but you can easily adjust to it. And if you need to I don't know, write an essay on it, then it's, I think it'll be pretty good. So um, the track point nub, it pretty much feels exactly like a, a ThinkPad track point, which is kind of interesting because um, from like Dell's laptops and HP laptops that might have these, it's always felt like really different, like slippery almost, um, or this one feels kind of, kind of on point, no pun intended. Um, the one issue is, is because this is kind of smaller. Um, if you lose this, then you're never going to find another one. Like I, I don't think, I, unless you find the entire keyboard assembly, like uh, new old stock or something, you're never going to find another one of these uh, ripoff track points. They're like a super micro size. And, um, I have a P1620 that I really want to use as well, but I don't have that to it. And, you know, having actual mouse input on this, um, is kind of necessary to use a computer in the first place. I mean, I don't want to plug in a USB mouse to this. It's a laptop. I, you know, I gotta make do with, with what's on there. So let's go over the specs. Um, even though I kind of already told them, I think. So yeah, it is a Core 2 Duo. Uh, it's listed on Fujitsu's site as like SU9300, but here it says U9300. I mean, I guess it's whatever. It's all the same. Also the sunlight shining through the window. So my bad. Um, 1.2 gigahertz. That's a little low, especially for the time, but it's still perfectly fine um, for browsing the web uh, within reason and, you know, doing like text document stuff. Um, two gigs of RAM, which is really good because 
The P1920 has one gig RAM, uh, one, the P1920 has one gig of RAM and uh, kind of chokes at some points. Um, the U810 had one gig of RAM and that really choked at every point. So, um, and even with like sort of a mostly stripped down like Linux distro install um, with just like basic desktop environment and stuff, um, even one gig of RAM is kind of cutting it thin. These days, two gigs is like bare minimum. Um, I mean, I would like say four gigs is kind of bare minimum actually, but two gigs can get by just fine. Um, for the GPU, it's Intel integrated uh, GMA 4500 MHD, or I think. Um, they, they have so many different like variations of the same shit, um, which is pretty all right for like super old games. Like uh, it can run Quake Spasm uh, and Quake and Quake 3 through IO Quake uh, pretty all right. Um, it uses OpenGL 2.1, so that sort of opens, uh, you know, widens your horizons for old games you might want to be able to play. But, uh, you know, I think GZ Doom requires OpenGL 3.3, so, you know, that kind of sucks. Um, I really did like using this daily, and uh, I think I still could. I think I'd, I'll just bring it with me sometimes. Um, I used it for like a semester in college, and, you know, it's completely flawlessly supported by Linux uh, in every aspect. And, you know, pretty much like the lowest spec machine I would say would be usable today. Um, like I said, I'm using, as you can see, I'm using Void Linux on it. With XFCE, it's like perfectly fine. The size and weight, like it's under three pounds easily. I think it's like 2.2 pounds or maybe 2.4 pounds. Um, it's pretty light. It makes it really comfy for like using in bed or like bringing to you where you don't have a really big desk. Um, like maybe you're going to lunch in a cafe or something and you wanna save all the space for your food and stuff, and but you need your laptop out. Um, so that's kind of like a great size for that. So if you wanna buy one of these, um, well, good luck, because I th these used to be common set on eBay. I would always find them for like 60, 70, $80, uh, which is why I bought three of them. <laughs> I bought the P1610, P1620, and P1630, um, all for around that price. And now lately, if there is one, it's gonna be at least like $150. So, I mean, I still think, um, if it's like perfect condition, then it's probably a good pickup for $150. But other than that, like, eh, oh well, like you're shit out of luck. Like, I feel like uh, just getting a ThinkPad X61 or something is is uh, your better course of action or ThinkPad X220 or something. Like if you can't find one of these, especially if it's like, uh, doesn't have the keyboard, um, because I think the keyboards themselves, if they're in the old stock, they're like 60 bucks. And if you don't have the keyboard, especially with the little nub, the think track the track point nub then um you know you're buying a brick at that point so i don't know just something to think about if you were interested in something like this um but otherwise i mean i think it's a pretty fun little system um i mean even when i wasn't using it at school i would watch it watch movies and shows on it all the time it's like really comfy system to sit in bed with so yeah anyway that's about it thanks a lot for watching we ramble about this laptop goodbye uh, one thing I forgot to mention that I just thought of after the fact is um, the hard drive. It's a 1.8 inch hard drive, so it's those again, um, just like the U810. And um, I'll log in again. Okay, whatever. <laughs> uh, just like the U810. Um, and obviously you want to upgrade to an SSD. Anything from this time, upgrading to an SSD is one of the best upgrades you can get um, for, you know, just random reason writes. It really helps out a lot. Or if, you know, on the normal hard drive, you click something and it takes like a second to open and it just hangs and your entire experience is just like, stop, go, stop, go, stop, go. Um, it really helps cut down on that. I mean, it's not to say it's like perfect, but it, it, getting an SSD really, really helps, especially with, you know, the improvement in random read and writes. So yeah, I mean, it's really, really good. The SSDs from that time um, are probably like, I got um, 1.8 inch SATA SSD uh, for this for about 20 bucks, uh, 64 gigs. And um, the speed is not really that good, uh, except for the random reason writes obviously are way, way better. So, um, but uh, you can probably get a adapter for like an M SATA and put a slightly modern SSD in there. So yeah, any way you go, if you have a computer made 15 years ago, um, getting an SSD for it is definitely one of the best things you can do. Oh yeah, here's also the touchscreen. Um, you know, it sort of works in the fact that it actually um, sort of works. <laughs> um, 
if you, as you get closer to the edges, it is very, very off, and even going through the calibration, um, it doesn't seem to fix it. But I mean, it's sort of, oops, yeah, it's it's kind of off, as you can see. <laughs> Fuck. So it's it's not the best. Um, but I guess if you're in a pinch, you absolutely need to use a mouse, and for some reason that's not working, then um, I guess it exists. But that's that's it. It just simply exists. It is not good. Not quite a speed run, but I think I did pretty good <laughs> considering my limitations here. Thank you.